So I, I'm in Beit Zayat just outside Jerusalem. And uh, here it is about to be eight o'clock at night. Um, I'll just call on you all in the, on the order that you happen to appear on my screen. And uh, if you want to just say your name and where you are and anything else you want to share, that would be wonderful. Annie, you're first on my screen. Oh, wait, you're, you're muted, though. Let me see. Yeah, you got, yeah, you got it. That is the phrase of the day. You are muted. I am now unmuted. Hi, Judah. Um, and I am uh, from Portland, Oregon, and I'm really looking forward to meditating and praying with you all. Mm, thank you. Welcome. Stephanie. Hello, everyone. I'm Stephanie Eibler. I'm actually from outside of Los Angeles, California, but I'm here visiting my kids and their newborn in Har Chalutz. Wonderful. Welcome, Alexander. Hi. Yep. Yeah. So you can see I'm here in Oxford, UK. It's uh, interesting. It's 6 p.m. here, and uh, so I'm aware we're looking at Shacharit, so <laughs> it's going to be very interesting working with the two ends of the day. <laughs> no, it's, that, that's, yeah, it's going to be something we work with for sure. I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit in the intro. Thank you, Alexander, for mentioning that, though. Thank you. It's lovely to have you here. Abby, please. Hi, I'm Abby, and I um, have mostly lived in Portland all my life. Hi, Annie. I think we know each other. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. And right now I'm in Southern Oregon on the coast, um, living by the ocean. And it's really good to see you, David, and everyone. Thank you. Uh, Deborah, you're next on my screen if you'd like to say hi, where you are. Hi, I'm Deborah, and I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. And I look forward to just sitting in and listening and learning something new. Beautiful. Thank you. Great to have you with us. Norma. Thank you. And I and I know you from IGS. Right, right. I remember sitting yeah. with you, yeah. Uh, Norma Rosie, if you'd like to say hi and where you are. Oh, wait, you're, you're, you're muted at the moment. It's OK, I can, there you go. Hi, Rabbi. Good to see you. I'm in Seattle. Awesome. Nice to have you with us. Quite a few West Coast people already, I'm noticing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great to have the West Coast represented. Eileen, would you like to say hi and where you are? Sure, I'm Eileen, and I'm also in Seattle. Lots, ah. lots of West Coast people, and another Seattle mm -hmm. person. That's nice. I'm looking forward to this. Thank you. Look, lovely to have you with us. It was a uh, Seattle people. If like the stereotype of Seattle of like it being very rainy is very accurate, then you guys would feel very at home in Jerusalem today. It was crazy. It was <laughs> like bananas, sudden rain from nowhere, and apparently we're going to have a big winter storm in the next few days. Apparently. Oh dear. Uh, uh, Carolyn, please will you say hi and where you are if you'd like to. Hi, I am in also on the West Coast in Berkeley, where and we had a much needed wee bit of rain last night as well. Mm. Thank you. I'm happy to hi, hear yeah. that. Great to have you with us. Um, Harry, hello. Oh, you're muted. Are you... uh, no, I'm so I'm muting myself. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Harry. Um, Hello again, and I'm from London. Great to have you with us. Judah, hi. So I'm Judah. I'm here in Sacramento, California, where it hasn't rained. And um, I want to give a shout out to Zoom and actually COVID, which caused Zoom, because there are three people in this room that I know and love that I didn't know except for Zoom. And of course, you're one Rabbi Daniel and Carrie and Annie. They're all dear friends. You're all dear friends of mine, and I wouldn't have known you without uh, without Zoom. The blessings, the hidden blessings of these things. Thank you, Judah. It's really lovely to be sitting with you. Uh, Jill, hi. Do you want to say hi to everyone where you are? Hello. Yes, I'm Jill. I'm in London town on a yes, yeah, kind of a rainy day. Lovely to see people that I recognise from other courses like Judah and everybody. And lovely to be working with you again, learning with you, Daniel. Thank you. It's lovely to have you here. Becca, hi. Do you want to say hi to everyone where you are? Or do you want, we can come back to you if it's... No, I'm good. Great. Um, I just uh, live with other people. I had to close the door. Um, well, hello to Seattle folks. I'm in Port Townsend out on the peninsula. It is totally 
blue sky sunny here. And I recognize Harry from a previous class, probably with you, Rabbi Daniel. It's great to see both of you again and to meet all the new people. Okay, good to be on your thing. Sorry, I was muted. Lovely to have you with us, Becca. Uh, Karen, you look like a fascinating person. <laughs> Do you want to tell everyone where you are? Sure. I'm in Beit Zai, and I'm uh, three doors down from you in our kitchen living room area. I'm Daniel's my partner, my husband. So, yeah. But I'm not a norm. I'm usually not in his classes. So this one was intriguing to me. So thank you, thank you darling. Sure. Great to have you with us. I'll get I'll get direct feedback about that later. Um, <laughs> Janet, how do you want to say hi to everyone? Where you are? Um, hello, everyone. I'm from the foot. I'm in the foothills of North Carolina. I can see the Blue Ridge Mountain from my uh, from my windows. Um, we had a tremendous winds yesterday, but everything now has settled down. The limbs have fallen, and no power lines at our location are down. And it's beautiful blue sky and very, very cold. So it's good to be here. Lovely to have you with us. Jess, Flies, do you want to say hi to everyone where you are? Hi, I'm Jess. Um, Daniel is my brother-in-law and Karen is my sister. And I, like her, have I don't typically join Daniel's classes, but this really intrigued me. And both Karen and I, separately, it intrigued us. So it was cool to find out that we were taking it at the same time. And I'm in Brooklyn, New York, and I have not been outside today. But it looks like it's kind of nice out. <laughs> looks cold. I don't know, winter. <laughs> Thank you, Jess. Lovely to be with us. Marilyn? Oh, wait, you're muted. Let me unmute. There you go. Mute myself. OK, so I'm Marilyn Wolfson from Jacksonville, Florida. This morning, believe it or not, it was 34 degrees in Florida. <laughs> but it'll be 80 in the next couple of days. I'm glad to be here. Wow. It's a big range. Um, thank you so much. It's great to have you and everyone with us. All the people whose cameras are not on, it's fine to keep your camera li like it is. If anybody else wants to turn your camera on to say hi to everyone, you're welcome to. Oh, hi, Ira, I see you now. Do you want to say hi to everyone and where you are? Oh, wait, but you're muted. There you go. You have to um, Sorry, Ira, you're muted. There you go. Yes, now I'm not muted. Sorry about that. So, uh, so th th hello, everyone. Uh, and nice to be here. I'm coming from Silver Spring, Maryland. Daniel, I think we did a uh, IJS uh, course of meditation not too long ago. And um, this is a topic that's dear to my heart. So thank you for offering it. Great to have you with us. Welcome. Svika, you want to say hi to everyone? Hi, everyone. Um, hi, Rob Daniel. Um, it's so wonderful to be here with everyone. I'm Svika, and I'm calling in from Berkeley, California. Nice to see some other Californians here. And um, I'm going to have my camera off because of things going on in the room, but I'll be fully present with everyone today. Glad to be here. Thank you. It's wonderful to have you with us, too. Susan, hi. You want to say hi to everyone? <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm here in very cold and kind of snowy Toronto, uh, but uh, spring is coming. I'm sure of it, you know, it's just not today. And uh, I was looking forward to learning at this course with all of you as well. Thanks. Lovely. Thank you. Oh, Aaron, please say hi if you want to. Hey, sorry about that. I'm kind of was doing something while I was listening and um, I'm Aaron Filmus and I saw Judah Rose in there. That's awesome. Nice to see you, Judah. Um, I am tuning in from Rhode Island, and it is chilly and a little windy outside, and I'm really excited to deepen my prayer practice with all of you. Thank you. It's great to have you with us. Deborah, why not? You want to say hi to everyone? Where would be your muted? I already did. Oh, you already did? Great. Yeah. Oh, hello. Oh, different, a different Deborah. Yeah, Deborah, Deborah. Hi, do you want to say hi to everyone and where you are? Hi, I'm in Jerusalem, and I'm just glad to finally have a chance to listen to one to one of your classes. Great to have you with us. Thank awesome. you. Welcome. 
Well, this is very exciting. Shech Yanu, the blessing we say on uh, starting something new or on just being grateful for arriving at a, a new moment. I'm going to say that now. And um, you're welcome to say along with me or just intend along with me uh, in gratitude for, for beginning this new adventure together. Baruch Ata Adonai. Eloheinu melech haolam shech yanu kimanu yanu lazman hazeh. And uh, please God, our work will be healing and transformative for us and everyone we're in contact with and ultimately the whole world. That's really the aim of everything we're trying to do to, uh, to work on ourselves uh, for the sake of all beings. So um, with that in mind, I'm going to say something about the specific work we're going to do together. Um, I'm going to share my screen so everyone can see the, uh, the source sheet as I begin referring to a couple of things on it. Hopefully most of you were sent this and anyone who wasn't just... Uh, just uh, nudge me for it after the session. Uh, as we're gonna travel together, today's uh, first session is just you know a taste of the beginning of this journey, but the whole 10 session journey is gonna go through what the Kabbalists call the four worlds. The four worlds are the, these four worlds in this column here on the table of uh, beginning in the world of action or manifestation or physicality or embodiment, that's Asiya. And then we have the world of formation or emotion. Uh, then we have the world of creation, Bria, or thoughts or mindfulness or mind. Uh, and then we have the world of Atsilu, of spirit, of emanation. And for the Kabbalists, they see the morning service that we're going to go on a journey through as a journey through those four aspects of life, of aspects of being human, of being alive. So we're going to see how the blessings we're going to focus on today have a very strong embodied component. And next week, I think they'll be even more explicit because next week's exercises will be like even more kind of like directly related to like being in our bodies and, and uh, moving our bodies. But I think even today we'll get a sense of that. And then we'll do some, uh, a, a few weeks of work with the section of the prayers known as Pusuge de Zimra, the Psalms, which relate to our emotional life. And we'll see that, that exercises we do really relate to working on our emotions, getting more intimate with our emotions, cultivating healthy emotions and so on. And then we'll move to our mind and thoughts and do similar work with our thoughts. And then finally, the uh, Amida prayer, the standing prayer, the silent prayer relates to the world of pure spirit. And that's considered the high point of the service for the Kabbalists. And then, then there's a kind of uh, coming down after which we'll also go through some of the exercises for together. Um, I should say also a word about um, text and practice. I think, I think you all uh, got the gist from the literature I sent out about this course that this is not really a text course. It's really a practice course, but all the texts have already been explained in an earlier course. So some of you did that course already. And anyone who would like access to those texts and those recordings, please just contact me after the class. And I'll explain how that works. Um, so that everyone, you know, if we skip over something fast or if there's a certain prayer or teaching you would like to spend more time with, just let me know. And I'll make sure everyone has access to what they want to have access to. I want to also offer like a, an intention about really like the point of all these exercises that we're going to do before we dive into the first one. I'll just come back together so I can see you all for this, uh, which is um, the, the idea is to get more intimate and to have more experiential connection with each little bit of the liturgy, each line, each, each blessing, each prayer, so that we can draw on these prayers whenever we want to as a resource throughout our lives. You know, if we're, if we're trying to cultivate a certain emotion or trying to strengthen ourselves in a certain way, we can say, oh, that reminds me of this prayer or this exercise, and I can go to that as a resource. And the, other, the other reason uh, that I hope this stuff will be useful is if you're in a practice of praying either on your own or in community, sometimes the words really hit home and really help us to connect and sometimes it's not so easy to know what the words actually mean for us right here right now in a in a deep meaningful way so the idea is we're we're building a well we're, we're cultivating a wellspring of experience that then we can draw on at any later time so later on if when, when i say certain prayers even if i don't invest as much time and energy in it in that given day if i previously had some deeper experience with it if, if that prayer has been like a kind of doorway for me into some inner experience i can just connect to even just some taste of that or some idea of that and that can make the prayer a lot more meaningful for me e even as i say if, if i don't have time to kind of do the whole thing over again uh, does anyone have any questions or want to add anything to that
great. Well, okay, well, hopefully that means it was clear. So let's uh, let's jump in. Let's practice. This is really what we're here to do. Um, we're going to practice with uh, the morning blessings. I'll share my screen again so everyone can see where we're going to begin. We're going to work with three of the morning blessings. Um, the first one being Pokeach um, Ivrim. Blessed are you, eternal one, our God, cosmic majesty, Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Pokeach Ivrim, who opens the eyes of the blind. And uh, as you may imagine, and as you may know, um, whenever there's something like that in, what, in our liturgy, in our texts, um, there's often a conversation about how this works and how this applies uh, for somebody whose eyes will not be opened in the morning because they will remain blind. Somebody who is physically or legally blind, you know, who is not, who is not going to see. Uh, you know, even after they wake up in the morning, they open eyes like everyone else. And so we have this beautiful uh, idea originally mentioned in the Talmud, and then it's here brought down in the Kitsur Shalchan Aruch. Not a text I quote very often, really a handbook of law, and uh, not, not known for being uh, overtly spiritual uh, unnecessarily. But uh, it, it gives a really beautiful teaching about this, uh, this blessing. It says, um, the blessing who gives sight to the blind may be said even by a blind person, because they also benefit from others who show them the way. So there's this idea that whoever we are, whatever our relationship is to physical sight, you know, whether we are blessed to have it or not, and anything in between, we all benefit from the phenomena of sight in the world and the fact that that exists. And I, the meditation instructions we're going to do now together I'm going to offer to you to really apply that however feels relevant in your life right now, whether that's a little bit more metaphorically or more literally, whatever it is. So let's make ourselves comfortable. Let's settle in. And I'm, I'm going to give um, instructions. I'll uh, here, come back to the gallery view for everyone. I'm going to give instructions for settling into meditation. Uh, some of you, I'm sure, have a regular practice and very used to it. So you can just, if you want, you can just ignore my instructions and just do what you normally do. But just so everyone is uh, on the same page, I'm going to give some instructions. So allow yourself to be comfortable. If you're sitting, you might want to feel your feet resting on the floor, feel the contact of the floor supporting you. Whatever posture you're in, Adjust yourself so that you're comfortable and stable, so you can feel yourself wanting to be still in this position for a few minutes. When you're ready, bring your attention inside yourself. Close your eyes if you'd like to. I'm going to ask you to choose one object, an anchor that is going to be like our home base for where we're going to try and keep as much of our awareness or attention or curiosity as possible. So if you're not sure what to use, I recommend for a lot of people what's really helpful is the soles of the feet in contact with the ground underneath you maybe or possibly the backside in contact with whatever's underneath your backside. So you can choose your own anchor. Of course, again, if you have your own practice, whatever usually works for you, it's fine. If you're not sure what to choose, anywhere in your body that feels safe and supportive for you to place your attention is good actually doesn't matter so much where it is, as long as you feel safe and supportive there. So we're going to bring as much curiosity to our place, our anchor, our object as we can. And you might want to help yourself with that by asking questions like, What's happening in that place or with that thing right now, moment by moment?
notice when we try and focus on one thing. Sometimes other things happen. Very often other things happen. And that's great and fine and very welcome. And we're just going to gently notice whatever else is arising, thoughts or feelings or sensations. And our exercise, our work right now is just to keep coming back to the anchor. We're just settling down our whole system by focusing on one thing. We can just be a little bit more calm, lucid. Just gently let go of other things if they're coming with kindness, compassion, curiosity. Come back to your object and ask yourself, what can I feel there right now in this moment? Let's sit like this quietly for a few minutes just to settle down. Anything that arises, just gently notice it. Kindly let it go. And with compassion, come back to your object. One more minute, just trying to be with our anchor with as much kindness and curiosity as we can. What can you notice there? I'm going to ask you to bring to mind 
a time in your life when your eyes were opened and you saw something you didn't see before. And this could be very literally or metaphorically, physical seeing or spiritual seeing. Whatever comes to you in this moment doesn't have to be the ultimate or the biggest or anything else. Just whatever seems like it resonates with you right now. I'm going to ask you to let yourself enjoy that new thing that you could see, whether again it was something physical or something in the world of ideas or spirit. Let yourself see it now, enjoy and appreciate it. See if you can access the emotions, seeing it for the first time. What did it feel like in your body that first time you saw it? Now I'm going to ask you to think about how this came about. How did this revelation, this opening of your eyes in some way come to pass? Was there something that somebody did? You, or other people, other creatures, divine beings, who did what to make this happen? And is there a way that you want to acknowledge or honor yourself or anyone else or any other being for helping you, for opening your eyes, for helping you have that revelation? anyone you want to wish gratitude to Let's bring the practice to a close. And in your own time, come back together with everyone else. Uh, 
And uh, we're a little bit of a larger group today than we will be going forward, but still I'd like to make a little bit of space. If anyone has anything they'd like to share, if anything came up for anyone that feels like it's, it's on your heart and you'd like to, uh, like to be witnessed, and like to be seen and heard and processing what just happened for you. I also want to say that the um, the group going forward is going to have a WhatsApp group that I'm going to set up tomorrow, and I invite everyone to who's uh, who's doing the sessions, and then that way, there'll also be a, uh, like an ongoing uh, and quite personal way for for folks to share whatever is going on as we practice these exercises in the sessions and also during the week. So we'll be able to hold each other in that as well. Hmm. I'll just say for myself just uh, to validate it in case uh, this happened to anyone else, that a couple of really different things came to me, two different examples of my eyes being open. Uh, one of seeing something physical and, and, one, and one a kind of more spiritual thing. And uh, even though I've thought about these things before, to think about them specifically in the context of, of gratitude actually was, it felt new or it felt at least like I hadn't done it for a long time. And it was, it was lovely to think about sending gratitude to uh, to the people who helped me with, with uh, experiencing those things so that was that was uh, that was new for me just now i see a couple of folks have raised their hands now so i'm going to turn it over annie please um, this was really beautiful it was not so long ago i was working via zoom with rabbi yale levy and was saying how i kept reaching out to the great presence and could not feel it. And she said to me, close your eyes, et cetera, et cetera, and, um, and see if you can feel God reaching out to you. And I'm, I was sitting where I was sitting and my eyes opened and there are uh, several, there are three old growth cedars about a block away that I can see right now. And I saw and felt the divine spirit, the source reaching towards me. It makes me cry just to think about it. I'm so grateful um, to Rabbi Levy and um, to God for that experience. And I can tap into that now um, at other times. So thank you. This was so beautiful. Thank you, Annie, for sharing that beautiful experience. That's, that's really remarkable. Uh, Judah, would you like to share something? Yeah, I would. And I love giving gratitude. So it's nice to give gratitude to you, Rabbi Daniel. As you know from the emails we exchanged this morning before, I, was, I did a videotaped uh, meditation of Rabbi Daniel last week. And it opened my eyes to something that had happened in my life that I had always viewed in one way. And all of a sudden, I saw it in a different way. And it was just, it was remarkable, you know, and um, it gave me a lot of joy. So I want to thank you, Rabbi Daniel. Well, that's, that's beautiful and humbling. And obviously when we have insights like that, it's because we're ready for them. And, you know, and they're ready to arise in us. But, you know, I'm very, uh, very honored to, you know, be a vessel to, to, to nudge the right thing at the right time to let it come. Thank you, Judah. Uh, Alexander, please. Thank you. Yes. Um, two things came to mind, two instances, and one, uh, both were accidental, and on both occasions, the people did not realize the insight that they'd helped me have. Um, and one was um, of. Uh, they saw something good in me, which I, I hadn't realized at all, um, for which I was very grateful. And the other was, I felt very embarrassed and shamed. I thought I've made a mess of this. And basically because of how someone behaved, I came to realize that about myself. And both of these instances were very humbling, actually. Um, so I, I, this is the insight that you give me today, that actually, whether it was a good, a good thing or a bad thing, they were both humbling. And I was grateful both times 
to be given that insight, just, you know, unbidden, really. That's beautiful. Thank you, Alexander. I really resonate with that. Yeah, humble pie doesn't always taste good at the time, but it's the best thing for us. It's the most nutritious dish. It's non-fattening. <laughs> right. And it's free. Um, see, these these are just, I'm so, thank you to everyone who shared. These are just the, exactly the kinds of things that then, you know, when we then come across this blessing later in any context, in the prayer service or whenever, we can tap into these kind of experiences and it can open up these whole worlds of meanings. And it, it can be, can be many di many different things you know you, you guys can repeat this exercise with this blessing a million times and and think about a million different things and have a million different experiences with it um but th and th this is this is really uh the methodology we're going to use so uh, i hope, I hope uh, that, that was a healthy taste of it and um i'm really uh grateful to be doing this with all of you so let's let's do some more let's let's make the most of our time together I'm going to uh, share my screen again to the next blessing. We had opening our eyes. And again, this one, uh, releasing the bound. Matir Asurim, blessed are you, eternal one, our God, cosmic majesty, who releases the bound. This one also primarily um, in its original context is, is clearly uh, meant to be understood mostly uh, physically, that what's happening when we're when we're lying down in our beds, most of us, and then we begin to move when we, the, the Talmud actually says these blessings should be said originally when we're first waking up and, for example, moving our bodies for the first time, sitting up for the first time and so on. So we're, we're finding out that our body works again and we're, we're discovering what it means to be a moving being again. And in this beautiful teaching from Rav Cook, which we are not going to read in this class, it's too long. But, and uh, as I said at the beginning, it's not a text class, but this is, uh, this is what the meditation is based on. And this beautiful teaching, he says, essentially that life is movement and movement is life. And of course, there are many different kinds of movement. It doesn't only mean physical, but also spiritual. He says, sometimes we go through periods where we don't move. Like, for example, when we're sleeping at night, uh, you know, most of us are not moving so much. And through those periods of not moving, he says, we come to appreciate even more what it means to move and be fully alive moving. So we're going to do an exercise now. It's pretty similar to the one we just did together, uh, thinking about a time when we had a new capacity for movement, again, physically or movement in, in, our, in our energy, in our spirit, in, in our mind, in any realm of our lives at all. Any, any time that we felt stuck or confined, and then we had a new lease of life. So I'll uh, come back to gallery views. So we can all be together. There you go. Wait, Zoom is playing. Zoom is playing funny things with me. Interesting. Uh, hopefully that work now. No, Zoom is being a little awkward. Um, sorry, everyone. Just want to be able to see you. Um, hmm. Can I guess you you guys can all see me? So we'll just carry on with the meditation and make the best of it. Um, Oh, it's, it's very distracting. Sorry, one second. I really got to... Maybe I have to close it. This one. No, something else again. No. Okay, I think the issue is the the captions. So I think I have to temporarily stop the captions because they I think they're doing this. <laughs> it's really not letting me do anything. Sorry. Um, mm, uh okay we're good now i can see you all and uh and now we can do the exercise so make yourself comfortable again settle into a position that's supportive for you for a few minutes you want to yawn or shrug your shoulders shake them down or sigh anything you want to do to let your body relax and reconnect again with your anchor your object that you chose last time
Allow yourself one more minute to relax and settle. Bring kindness and curiosity to your anchor, your object, your anchor. And when you're ready, think of a time when your movement was confined in any realm of your life, in any dimension. And then it was increased. You were released. Matera Surim. You were somehow released from confines, physically unbound or intellectually or spiritually or emotionally released in some way and you could move more you had a greater range of freedom of movement and again it doesn't have to be the biggest or best example just whatever comes up right now let yourself enjoy that newfound freedom that you had. Remember what it was like to experience it at the time, the first time maybe, or the first time in that way. How did it feel in your body? What emotions were present? If you want, you can imagine how you looked. What did your face and your body look like when you were released, experiencing that greater freedom? as we did with the last exercise, we're going to think about what caused this to be. What did you do? What did other people or beings do? What did Hashem do? How did this come to pass? And as before, I can ask you to consider if there's anything you want to communicate or send to yourself or any other being, whether it's gratitude or anything else, an acknowledgement of that liberation you experience, that releasing. Let's bring this practice to a close in your own time.
gradually. When you're ready, let's come back together. As, as, a, as I imagine some of you are feeling, you know, with, with the idea of these sessions is to get through ideally three in each session. So, you know, we're doing them for a length of time that is hopefully realistic, you know, for a lot of us to actually integrate into our daily routines, some of these. But also, as you're probably getting a taste, you could do it for longer. You know, you could take, if any of these is really strong for you, or is opening a door that you feel wants it to be explored, then, you know, I really support and welcome that if anybody wants to use these prompts for a longer exercise, it certainly, uh, certainly supports that as well. Does anyone uh, want to share anything that came up in those few minutes we just had together? Abby, see your hand there, please. Yeah, um, um, I live with multiple sclerosis, and um, so um, I never know when I'll be able to move very well or not at all. And so I was working with uh, an image of being on the beach on a day when I could actually walk well and, and even dance a little bit. And um, but it was it was too hard to stay with because it, it came from too dark and limited a place. So I went back to when I used to teach dance and all of a sudden I found myself being able to do like a, a gymnastic flip. You know, I mean, I was, you know, really, and how good I felt when I did that and how much I learned. And then I came back to the MS experience and realized that they're the same experience, um, feeling wise. Um, and that was really helpful um, because now when I take a little bit of a walk um, with a little bit of dance, um, it's as big and whole as that moment when I could do the flip and that's that's a great gift thank you that's very powerful abby thank you for sharing that yes yeah thank you yeah wow um i see a couple of other hands becca please well i feel a little bad following up with that just gorgeous sharing um, with just a little bit of a downer. Um, so I just have the hardest time sitting still. <laughs> it's part of, big part of why I'm taking the class and have done other meditation class things. Um, and, you know, I, I think I'm sharing that with you all so that hopefully you can celebrate with me when I kind of get there more later on. Um, I just wanted to say that part so hard for me. Thank you for sharing that, Becca. Uh, I, I have an idea. I might uh, drop you an email about something later that might be helpful. Um, Susan, please. I didn't realize there was this prayer. And, and I am so happy to know about it because every single day I give blessings to the fact that I can walk again because my knees were so badly damaged. And um, two years ago, I had both knees replaced right at the sort of the beginning of COVID time. And I walk now with no pain. And it's such a beautiful thing. And every single day, I just give thanks to to Hashem, to the surgeon who operated, to the whole team that helped me get there. So thank you. I've got a wonderful prayer now that I can use a real prayer, not just, you know, I mean, as I say, it's, it's every day I, I give thanks. So well, thank you for that. That's really heartwarming to hear, Susan. Thank you. Thank you very much. And by the way, your own prayers are real prayers too. But I know what you mean. It's nice when we uh, we find the words of our spiritual ancestors uh, resonate with us so much. Thank you. Um, Harry, please. Mine wasn't so much about feeling free from um, physical movement. It was feeling free from um, life choices. Um, sometimes 
I've ch changed lots of things that I've done in my life and I've been and I've had multiple careers and I actually just feel very brave now I looked at it and I thought how brave that was to do to change this and how brave to go and unbind myself from a safe job and leap somewhere else and unbind myself from a safe life and go and leap somewhere else and try something else out um, and be here now. This is also a step into something else. So mine was very much uh, that sort of we getting out of safe places into taking risks and unbinding myself. That's so beautiful. It feels very poor and dick. Thank you, Harry. Really, really resonates with me. Um, thanks to everyone who shared. Let's do one more exercise. Our third and last one together. I'm going to share my screen again. Oh, wait, I have to share the right thing. Sorry. I'll get the hang of this for the 20 seconds entry. Okay, here we go. All right. So one last blessing in this little set we did. We had opening our eyes, releasing the bound, and now straightening the bend. Blessed are you, eternal one, our God, Baruch Atah Adonai, Lahinu Melech HaOlam, Cosmic Majesty, Zokef Kufufim, who straightens the bent. And Rav Kook's teaching, Rav Kook is a great mystic from the 20th century, I should say, his teaching here again, we're not going to read the whole thing, the exercise is based on that, is very similar to the one we just did, in that he says, just like he said, that movement was an integral part of being alive, that being alive is to be moving in some way, again, whether it's physical or spiritual. So he says the same thing here about alignment. He says that we both physically and spiritually need to be aligned to be in our ideal state. He says, of course, everybody goes through times when we're not aligned, just like we go through times when we're confined and not moving. So he says, what is that transition that takes us from being out of alignment to inner alignment. That's what we're giving thanks for with this blessing. Again, this is actually faithful to the original piece of Talmud where these blessings are first mentioned, um, where it says, you know, this blessing is said upon standing up for the first time in the morning for those people who are blessed to be able to stand. So, you know, it's, he's really taking that and saying, you know, this also applies to every area of our being in our life. When we stand up, when we align ourselves in whatever way, we choose to think about so let's uh let's be comfortable again for a few minutes of sitting bring your attention inside and again use your anchor to settle down with kindness and curiosity see what's happening with your anchor moment by moment And think about whatever example you like of a time in your life when you were somehow out of alignment, bent, out of shape, maybe bent off some course that you wanted to be on, or maybe it was an inner alignment, bent over in some way. Whatever comes to mind for you, it could be emotional or spiritual or actually physical. Maybe you were bent from carrying some kind of burden, whatever it was. And something changed. There was some kind of realignment, some kind of straightening up. And let yourself remember and experience what that felt like. How did it feel in your body?
What did your face look like? What did your heart feel like? Let yourself enjoy that realignment, that straightening up. Again, as before, let's think about what made this happen? What did you do to help make it happen? What did anyone else from this world or other worlds do to help make it happen? Is there anything you want to send anyone, an acknowledgement, gratitude, or anything else? For this experience that you had. How does it feel to do that? How does it feel to acknowledge? Whoever it was, they helped this thing come to pass. Let's bring this exercise to a close. Now oh, time's gonna be over in a couple of minutes. So just really wanna thank everyone very, very much. Hope you, uh, you get the gist. I will say, as we go through the Siddur, the exercises will be of a different nature. They won't all be, uh, you know, these, these three blessings were really a set. And so the exercises on them were really representing, you know, their similarity as blessings. So we did three very similar exercises, so three very similar blessings. As we go through the service, we'll see chanting and movement, some writing, you know, a few different kinds of practice, some more... Uh, more kind of embodied awareness and the exercises we're doing next week as well so um, we'll get a taste of a few different kinds of meditation and um, you know as I said at the beginning I really hope this will be helpful to use whenever you want to use it and uh, you know in the context of a prayer service as well uh, but also just uh, in our lives generally so I'll send out the recording everyone will get that and uh, as I said those people doing the course will also get a whatsapp group link tomorrow please god and uh, so we can keep that conversation going. And uh, everyone is really welcome to email me with any questions or anything you want to find out more about. Any any of the texts that you would like to know more about, I'll be really happy to, to see anyone's emails. Well, have a wonderful rest of your day or good night if you're here with me in Israel. And uh, I really look forward to keeping in touch with everyone and to uh, practicing with you.